opera singer Marjorie Lawrence was at the height of her career. She was famous throughout the world and was considered one of the greatest dramatic sopranos in the history of the stage. But her whole world changed in an instant when during a dress rehearsal in Mexico, she began to experience tremendous pain throughout her entire body. At the age of 31, Marjorie Lawrence, strong and energetic farm girl from Australia, was stricken with infantile paralysis, better known as polio. Marjorie Lawrence refused to allow her illness to destroy her dreams. In her autobiography, Interrupted Melody, Marjorie said, The idea of my being a lifelong invalid was preposterous, unthinkable. A career like mine could not be stopped in mid-flight. Other people might go down and stay down to infantile paralysis, but not me, not Marjorie Lawrence. Marjorie was born in 1909 on a farm at Deans Marsh, Australia. Because her mother died when she was two years old, Marjorie became independent at an early age. She developed a passion for singing and sang solos at church and won vocal competitions in her teens. She decided early that singing would be her life's mission. Unfortunately, her father was not happy with her decision, so she decided to run away from home at the age of 18 to Melbourne, Australia to follow her dream. My mind was made up, she said, and I can be a most determined person. Marjorie did so well in her singing pursuits in Melbourne that she was soon on her way to take the next step toward triumph, Paris. Marjorie was thrilled to be accepted by the famous vocal instructor, Madame Cécile Gilly. She learned quickly, though, that being a singer was not going to be easy. I admit, I had no idea of the labor involved in becoming a singer. The early drudgery and disappointments nearly caused me to throw in the towel more than once she said. With her usual determination, Marjorie refused to give up and studied even harder to prove herself. She also learned to dress in style and replace her rough farm girl appearance with a cultured one. Her efforts paid off when in 1933 she was offered the role of Wagner's Ortrud in Lohengrin to be performed at the Paris Opera, her next triumph, the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. Because Marjorie Lawrence had a powerful, dramatic voice, she was able to sing challenging roles that other sopranos were unable to handle. Her first role at the Metropolitan was Brunhilde from Wagner's Die Wolkere. The part called for Brunhilde to lead her horse barebacked through a burning funeral pyre at the end of the opera. Because of the danger involved in the scene, the horse had always been safely led in the past by the rains through the fire. Marjorie insisted on doing the scene the way it was written and bravely rode the horse through the fire. In a scene from Interrupted Melody, the movie based on Marjorie Lawrence's autobiography, Eleanor Parker, playing the part of Marjorie, reenacts the famous scene. It was in New York that Marjorie met the love of her life, Dr. Thomas King. They were married on March 29, 1941. The Kings decided to honeymoon in Mexico City, where Marjorie had a singing engagement. A few days after arriving in Mexico, Marjorie began having severe headaches. During a rehearsal, the pain increased. Had a dozen demons been driving red-hot spikes through my skull, they could have not caused me more severe torture than I experienced when I sang the first ho jo to ho of the battle cry. Shafts of pain shut to all parts of my body, temporarily taking the sight from my eyes and constricting my throat. Marjorie fell to her knees, still singing. 
I kept on singing in much the same way a boxer must continue slugging after taking a stupefying blow. Marjorie was diagnosed with severe poliomyelitis. Polio is caused by a virus that affects the central nervous system and weakens or destroys the cells responsible for telling muscles how and when to move. During the late 1800s to the mid-1900s, polio killed and paralyzed thousands of people. The disease is waterborne. Infection happens when people drink or come into contact with contaminated water. Most of polio's victims were children, but sometimes adults were affected by it, such as President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Fortunately, in 1955, Dr. Jonas Salk developed a vaccination that proved to prevent polio and cases of the disease have dropped drastically in most of the world. Marjorie heard about a new therapy created by a fellow Australian, Sister Elizabeth Kenny, that had been showing great results. Marjorie's husband learned how to apply the therapy, which gently exercised, stretched, and massaged the affected muscles. Slowly, she began to improve. Marjorie was strong-willed, but she was worried. Would I ever walk again? She asked herself. Would the paralysis affect my voice? Was my career at an end? One day, Marjorie felt that she had to try to sing again. Little by little, she gained more strength and knew that with hard work that one day she would be able to perform again. She began to sing on radio, then hold recitals. The New York Times read, Marjorie Lawrence in Comeback on Concert Stage wins triumph. In 1943, Marjorie returned to the Metropolitan to play the role of Venus in Tannhauser while sitting on a specially built chair. She received a standing ovation and the critics felt her voice was even better than ever. She would go on to do several more operas successfully. While Marjorie was busy fighting polio, World War II was being fought in Europe. To help out, Marjorie sang at army camps and hospitals all over the United States. I was possessed by a burning desire to make my contribution to the war effort, she said. I wanted to get near the thick of things. Soon she was off to Australia and the South Pacific, and later to Vietnam to entertain wounded soldiers. She also sang for Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham Palace and for President Roosevelt at the White House. Gradually, Marjorie was able to sing while standing and sang on the opera stage until the early 1950s and then became a college professor. Former students established the Marjorie Lawrence Lincoln Endowment Fund for disabled people attending performances of the Metropolitan. Marjorie Lawrence died of heart failure January 13, 1979, in Little Rock, Arkansas. Her voice, her life, was the sound of triumph.